Good morning and welcome to Jay Chats with Bender JCC CEO Josh Bender. Josh's guests today are Meryl Lasko, lead and mentor teacher, Rabbi Sarah Mayton, director ECC, and Diana Avram, parent of a three and five-year-old and chair of the ECPC. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to J Chats, our weekly live broadcast um, where we have an opportunity to sit with the individuals in our community who are making it all happen. And today we have really an exciting conversation. It's sort of a continuation of a conversation uh, from a couple months ago. We had a conversation with um, Rabbi Sarah Meaton, our um, the director of the Bender ECC. Um, and today we're expanding the audience, the group a little bit. We're, we're bringing in some other perspectives. So I'm joined again with, uh, by Rabbi Sarah um, Mayton. And we also have Mero Lasko, who is a teacher and mentor uh, in uh, the Bender ECC. And we have also a parent perspective um, from Diana Avram, who is the chair of the Early Childhood Parent Committee uh, and a parent of, of two uh, children in our preschool. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Good morning. Thank you for having us. We're really excited to be able to talk about our school. Yeah, thank you for having me here today. Absolutely. It's uh, been such a pleasure uh, in my a few months at the Bender uh, JCC, just catching a glimpse of the, the school and all the magic that happens uh, in the Bender ECC. Um, so why don't we start out this morning and give our J Chats uh, audience uh, a better sense of, of, of um, what each of your roles is in the school, you know, how long you've been part of the community, and just a little introductory, a uh, few introductory comments. Why Sarah, why don't we start, uh, Rabbi Maiton, let's start with you. Sure. So I am the director of the Early Childhood Center. I've been here for about a year and a half. It's my second school year. Uh, first school year was different than any other school year in a school that I've led, uh, but it's been wonderful to be back in person this year, welcoming our students and our families, being able to provide them um, with that social aspect, the childcare families need. Um, so it is, it's been truly a, a, an amazing year watching how um, our staff have adapted, our families have been incredibly uh, accommodating and flexible and understanding, um, really feeling a sense of community even grow more this year. It's been really great. Thank you for sharing that. And Meryl, it's so wonderful to have the teacher perspective. You have um, not only this year's perspective, but many years perspective from uh, the standpoint of, of really being in the field, literally with um, the, uh, the students. So. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to the JC and how long you've been here. Um, thanks, Josh. Actually, um, uh, this is my 12th year now teaching with the, uh, with the preschool. And I've always been with the same class that I'm with now, the Sue Seam class, which are two, two turning three year olds. Um, and uh, it happens to be my favorite age to be with. So I'm really delighted to have been with them on such a long standing basis. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, I was invited to become a mentor teacher as well. And so I also had some opportunities to work with some of the other teachers that have come into the program and uh, just kind of uh, uh, think together about the work that we're doing in the classroom and kind of share ideas with each other. Um, so that's, that's a, a really fun part of, of my position as well. It's amazing to have that opportunity to both teach but also be be a mentor and and um, we know how incredibly important that is in, in the educational environment for teachers to have that support in uh, growing their their craft. Uh, Diana, so we um, have a parent perspective here today, which is a really important perspective for us to hear. Um, thanks for joining us and tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to the Bender JCC and and how you got involved also in the leadership capacity. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, we moved about uh, summer of 2019 from New Jersey to the Maryland area. And um, we, we knew some friends from before who had children in the JCC preschool and thought it was great. So we hadn't even 
uh, really come down here, we said, okay, we'll, we'll try Bender JCC Preschool. And it, it just blew us away compared to our kinder care that we were at in New Jersey, um, just above and beyond in so many different ways. And um, one of the things that was amazing was the ECPC programs that were going on, which is basically parent-led um, programs involved with the preschool to help families kind of meet and hang out outside of the school. Um, and so uh, that's how I got involved, I guess. Um, I had been a room parent and met a couple people who had done things with the ECPC before. Um, and so the ECPC typically uh, partners to provide school spirit, culture, um, host social gatherings with the ECC families, organize tzedakah or charity projects. Um, and so uh, I joined last, last year in January and then the school kind of had to close in March. So it was, it's been an interesting time. Um, but this year we've really focused on more of the virtual programming, even though our school has been in person um, for a while, we haven't been able to mix the classes, uh, which is understandable and we want to keep everyone safe. Um, so we've worked more on virtual programming this year, uh, which has been more with music and movement and things like that, uh, which my, my kids have enjoyed. I know my other uh, friends have their kids have enjoyed um, and it kind of connects us even though we're not able to meet in person. Um. Absolutely, yeah, and I, I, I know there's been um, lots of programming to help families really uh, so navigate through this difficult year, keeping everybody connected safely. And, you know, um, Diana, you touched on something I think, I think a lot about when we think about um, our preschool and um, early childhood education in general, which is like, it really is more than just about the, the students and the children, right? It's about like the families who in some cases are, are new parents and they're establishing themselves and um, forming their families, making decisions about what's important to their family moving forward. And, and uh, um, you know, the Bender ECC plays so much larger of a role than just the place where you drop your child off. And I think you, you really capture that point um, really well. Um, so um, for anyone watching today, sort of learning about Bender ECC and, and uh, hearing from, um, from all of us during our conversation, what is it that you would share from your vantage point that, that makes the Bender ECC uh, unique? What are some of the sort of um, defining characteristics of our school that really make it Bender ECC? Meryl, why don't you jump in and give us sort of that teacher perspective? Um, it's so interesting that you ask this question because it just so happens that yesterday evening we had a, a teacher training together and the one thing the thing that we were talking about was the identity of our school and we came up with a, a really kind of beautiful list of of words and phrases that kind of connect to who we are as a as a school um, so I thought maybe I would share some of those with you um, of course we're a Jewish community center school and so um, those two parts, th those two words are very much a part of our identity, but we're not just Jewish. Um, the community is a very important part and we're, um, we're a, div a diverse community, even though we, we do focus a lot on uh, the, the Jewish heritage and, and traditions and holidays. Um, but we include, our, our families include many different other um, backgrounds from the community and everyone is included and welcomed and we celebrate all the different um, cultures that are part of our community. Uh, we really have, have tried to kind of create a home-like feeling in the classroom so that uh, for many of the families, it's kind of like a home away from home. And so it was so wonderful when we were, um, after being closed for so many months to open up again, and um, have that feeling of everybody coming back together and, and that, that joyful kind of uh, coming back home together that was, was so much a part of who we are. Um, 
we've had to be really flexible this year. So that's been a big part of who we are, just trying to, to kind of go with the flow whenever we can and, and trying to reinvent things so that we can continue to um, provide the things for the families that, that we always have in, in new and, and different ways, keeping the safety of everyone in mind. Um, we're also a place that tries to respect the, the, the entire community. We, we believe that the children in our um, school, even the very youngest ones, are very capable and competent and are um, citizens of the community, full citizens that have full rights as, as members of the community. So we respect them as, as human beings and we um, try to uh, encourage their curiosity and, and try to take uh, the lead from, from the things that interest them in, in order to kind of direct and, and design uh, learning experiences for them. Uh, we, we believe that children have the right to construct their own learning. And so uh, we want to kind of look to include and, and kind of make uh, the, the, the elements that are part of every child's education organic to the learning experiences that they are seeking to find for themselves. Um, and that's, that kind of leads into uh, our inspiration because we are a school that is inspired by the approach that was pioneered by the preschools of Reggio Emilia, which are, um, Reggio is a, is a city in Italy that is kind of world renowned for its early childhood educational programs. And we are very much influenced by the thinking and the philosophy of those programs. And we kind of try to, um, try to, to uh, create experiences in our classrooms that are inspired by those philosophies. So that's a little bit about who we are and what we do. Great, no, thanks, thanks for sharing that, Meryl. Uh, Rabbi Maiden, you wanna extend that a little bit and sort of share from your... your... Sure, um, in my um, 10 plus years in early childhood education, before I came to the JCC, I was always in synagogue preschools. Um, and there are a few things that really set the JCC apart uh, in terms of Jewish preschools. Um, you'll find similar aspects in terms of Havdalah, Shabbat Singh, celebrating Jewish holidays as they come up. But as Meryl mentioned, um, the JCC is a much more diverse community than you often find in synagogue preschools, drawing from um, children that are, are not necessarily Jewish, who don't necessarily um, uh, approach uh, their Jewish practice in similar ways, um, from completely secular Israelis to uh, more religious, uh, traditionally religious Jews who might want to come to aftercare only four days a week because Fridays they'll be home for Shabbat. Um, we have children who uh, are embassy families from Israel uh, and South America, children who are English language learners that we warmly welcome into our community. Um, we have children with, uh, with physical special needs uh, uh, who are receiving speech therapy or occupational therapy. We try really hard to be a very inclusive community. Um, and then, of course, we have the, the beauty of all the resources of being part of a larger center. So we've got the pools and swimming lessons. We've got the opportunity for children to um, take dance or soccer or movement or karate through the center. Uh, so a lot of enrichment for the children, but also the families uh, who have membership with their tuition at the JCC. Um, and those resources really um, come uh, as I said, for the whole family outside of school, but also into the school where the athletics director um, can run a PE class for our older students or our Israeli shlicha runs a, a Hebrew dance and movement class. So really opportunities that you don't find in a smaller community um, and not to mention, of course, the amazing facilities and, and grounds that we've been able to take advantage of during these COVID times, spending lots of time outdoors, exploring nature, um, really taking advantage of, of the beautiful setting. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Diana, do you want to add um, some of your thoughts as a, as a parent? Um, your yeah. So, um, I mean, Meryl, Meryl described the background of Reggio so beautifully. And, you know, um, that was one of the first things that, that we thought was so, you know, amazing about this community and preschool that we came into was, was this Reggio philosophy. Um, you know, the kinder care that we were at in New Jersey was, 
was highly sought after. There was a waiting list um, and, you know, our kids were happy and safe, but they were doing tons of worksheets, worksheets and more worksheets, um, coming home, coloring in the lines, try to get in the lines, tracing. Um, we had lots of projects that were sent home that were clearly done by the teachers. <laughs> um, and this is just completely different and exactly what we wanted for our children. And the fact that Reggio just allows them to be so creative and um, the things they were coming home with may not look like a, a tree or a, a rock necessarily, but they, they took time to work on it. They thought about it and um, the amount of work and teaching that that goes into creating an environment like that is really astounding um, because it's much harder to create these uh, setups and scenarios for children to kind of look at and contemplate and think about their creative projects. It, it's obviously much easier to throw a worksheet at a three-year-old. So um, that was one of the first things that we were we were blown away by is just the creativity with with all the teachers um, that we've had. And so it's been last year, Allie was in the twos and now she's in the threes and Josh was in the fours and now he's um, in the Keshek class, which we were so, so fortunate and so thankful that um, Rabbi Sarah Mate and the JCC pushed forward this kindergarten class that we could have for our son, which is, you know, in person. And, um, you know, that creativity really is, has come forward in the Keshet class, you know, the building blocks, because they have, um, you know, the projects they were doing this year with, uh, they did a cafe and they made all the food and they made the prices and they made, um, they wanted some of the classes to order their uh, food from their cafe and just so much went into this and they had such a great time and it, it was just so creative, um, which was, you know, very different from our experience before. And then the other uniqueness I kind of touched on before was, um, you know, the the family and community feeling that you get at, at the Bender JCC preschool. Um, you know, at our other preschool, whether it was just that everyone was so busy, but I don't know, everyone, is, you know, is working a lot too here at the JCC, you know, many families with two parents working. Um, but we've, we've been so fortunate to meet so many new friends um, through the JCC community um, be, because of all the various things that we've talked about before um, and being part of this community. And, um, you know, the general feeling when you walk into a school and the director knows who you are and the teachers know who you are and not just who you are, but your both kids and their names and your husband and um, you know the other school that we were at was kind of just a uh, kind of just drop off and go and pick up and go and um, th this community is much much more than that. So yeah, and you know, in the morning sometimes when I come to the Bender DC, I see um, Rabbi Maiten and. Um, um, other staff members standing outside greeting the children and greeting the parents and it, it really is um, reminds me of that that personal touch that you talk about um the one thing I, I i also was thinking diana as you're sharing about the the creative uh teaching that goes in in the, the sort of philosophy around the teaching and sort of focusing more on the process of learning rather than the product you know a perfect uh coloring page, you know, colored in perfectly, but rather what is the process of learning? Um, and I, I imagine um, that a lot of this has to do with the commitment that the vendor ECC has to um, growing teachers, right? Teacher training. I know last week there was a professional development day. Obviously, Meryl, you're a teacher, so we, we um, acknowledge how incredibly important it is that um, to support teachers in, um, in, in their learning. So, 
I wonder if we could say a few words about sort of that uh, commitment to professional development of the teachers. Rabbi Maiden, you want to take that one? Sure, sure. So um, I, we believe that our teachers are, of course, the backbone of our program and supporting them is uh, my top priority. So whether it's making sure that they are adequately compensated uh, and receiving um, benefits, the same as all the other uh, staff of the JCC uh, and acknowledge for their hard work or making sure that they can continue to grow in their in their learning and in their field, whether they've been teaching for two years or 20 years. Um, we pay for teachers to take professional workshops and classes. Uh, if we have newer staff who are not yet credentialed, we will um, support them and, and pay for them to get the formal credentialing and education they need uh, to become leads and, and move further in their careers. Uh, we do a lot of study together as a staff uh, at our staff meetings. Before COVID, we built into our week uh, learning community meetings where the staff could uh, learn together every single week during school. Um, it remains to be seen how we can build that back into our program in post-COVID times, but uh, we've continued our learning in evenings uh, with, with staff meetings and, and workshop opportunities, uh, professional development days. Um, and then, of course, we also um, we, we support each other. We know that the staff themselves bring a lot of experience and knowledge. And so we have mentor teachers as well. So whether a teacher has been teaching for, for two years or 20 years, there's always room for them to grow here at the JCC. We believe very strongly in promoting from within. So a number of our lead teachers started out as associate teachers. Uh, our mentor teachers started out as lead teachers. Um, so we really want our, our staff to feel like this is a place where they can stay, where there's room for continuing growth and development, and where they feel supported in their educational journeys. Um, our staff are lifelong learners, never feeling like they've checked the box and they're done, but they're always looking for new opportunities for rethinking uh, whether it's how to look at the environment of their classroom or how to present a holiday or a ritual to students. Um, we're, we're always thinking together and trying new things. Excellent. Well, yeah, that's that's very clear when you when you observe this environment. Um, so let's talk a few minutes about. Um, I love to share um, if we could just spend a couple of minutes sharing um, anecdotes or stories or moments um, that um, you have seen in the school um, that really sort of stand out for you. That sort of like this is why we're here and we do what we do um, in terms of um, education for um, in vendor ECC. Meryl, why don't you start us out? I'm sure you have so many over your 12 years and I'm sure um, you have many stories to share. Yeah, so many. I, I, I'm gonna actually share one that just happened uh, uh, a week or so ago. We were, we were doing that professional development day and um, toward the end of the professional development day, the teachers were given some time to uh, reconsider our classroom environments and kind of think about, you know, things that are happening in the classroom and how we might maybe uh, change things up or move things around to kind of uh, spark new interest. And there was one area in our classroom that just was kind of blah. And uh, we had set it up uh, for a particular intention and the children were using it somewhat, but it just wasn't an exciting corner. So um, my team and I kind of started talking about what could we do to like spruce this up a little bit. And my team actually came up with a fabulous idea to just totally change that area of the classroom and create a book nook because we noticed that the children really, really loved reading books, but a lot of our books were on bookshelves that were kind of adjacent to our construction area. So it was, there wasn't like a dedicated area for them to really spend time with the books that they loved. So we moved all the books and a bookshelf over to this area and my, my team set up just this beautiful natural area where they, uh, one, of, one of my um, members of my team is a really um, incredible woodworker and he does all kinds of beautiful work with natural wood. And he had created this natural wood table and used like these big wood cookies to create like stools and stumps for seats. And so we set up this kind of natural area with the wood table and the stumps and the bookshelf with the, all the books that were set up in an inviting way. And we were very excited because we left on Friday afternoon and we were like, what's gonna happen on Monday morning? And it was so amazing because 
every single child that walked in was like, what is this? And they like headed like a beeline for this new area. And suddenly this area that like was having nothing happening in it was like this hotbed of in excitement and interest. And there was like practically every child spent amazing time and they were not just by themselves. They were like sharing the books with each other. Uh, they were they were sitting together. They were looking at the books together, and it was just it was just such a beautiful example to me of how, like, just a little bit of a change up can can create a whole new energy in the classroom. Um, so that was just just one example of the kind of thing that that just really just sparks joy for me is is seeing something in the classroom that happens in such a new an exciting way for the children. Great. I would love, um, Diana's son, Josh, joined us at the beginning of the year, but her daughter, Allie, just joined us. And Diana, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what returning to school has meant for your kids. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, so Josh, um, when COVID happened and the school closed, you know, I have these pictures of like, okay, we can do this and have every single project out on my kitchen table. And then, you know, that, that gleam of hope kind of faded after a few months. And then, um, you know, Josh really, really missed his friends and, and the classroom and the teachers. And it was, it was getting to a point where I would try to send him out, you know, let's go outside. And he just was not interested anymore um, because it wasn't with his friends. You know, he he really had had enough with, with me and Allie and his dad. It, 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 it's, it's just human nature. You need to be around your friends, especially when you're at such a young age. And um, he, he still knows he is so lucky to be at school with his friends. Um, you know, the mask really doesn't bother him when he knows that he could have been home on a computer, which really was not working for him at all when we tried anything virtual. Um, and he's, he's so happy to be in the Kesha class. Um, Allie joined uh, just a little while ago. Um, and, you know, I wasn't sure how she would do with the mask when this all happened. She was two. And, um, you know, I, I, I just wasn't sure. But she's so happy to be at school. And, and the mask is really just a small thing for all of them. It's really amazing that they, they, they pop in the car. And I'm like, guys, do you want to take off your mask? Like, they, it doesn't seem to phase them. It's just something that they they do and it's something they acclimated to and um she she loves being at school and she loves her friends and i love hearing how she loves her friends and her teachers and um you know for both of them they are so excited i i wanted to say one of the the things that stands out to me is the first time uh, Josh and Allie went to school last year and they came home and they took off their shoes and there was buckets of sand <laughs> coming out. And, you know, I, I was so happy because our other daycare promised that we would go outside in New Jersey. And it was always, oh, well, we, we just didn't get to it or we went out for a little bit or, um, you know, whatever it may be, especially in winter, oh, well, so-and-so didn't have a jacket, and so we didn't go outside, or, um, but it is amazing at JCC. They get outside as much as possible. Um, there's, my favorite moments have been pictures of them in the rain outside. That is Allie's favorite thing in the world is to jump in puddles. So, um, you know, those have definitely been some of her favorite days is to put on her boots and her rain jacket and the whole class goes outside. And, um, you know, there's a bag of extra clothes that comes home, but they are, they are thrilled to go outside. And I, and, and I'm so happy that, that they get to do that too. And it's not just 
go outside, they've had nature walks, they go to the garden, they, you know, they, they have different experiences outside. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I think you also remind us um, how important it has been this year, um, the role that the Bender JCC, uh, the preschool has served um, in, in terms of um, help giving um, our families and our children a sense of uh, normalcy and community and connection. Um, and I, I don't think we can um, stress that enough, how, how wonderful that has been. Um, we're coming up. Uh, to the end of our, our uh, session, but I wanted to um, wanted to spend like two minutes maybe on sort of thinking about the future. I know um, um, planning for next school year is underway, and um, um, I know I heard this week we've got five more applications for next year, and uh, the enrollment is coming in, and, and there's a lot of optimism about the future. Um, maybe a few words about uh, Rabbi Maiton and Merrill, you can certainly share as well about What's, what, what, what should we expect for next year? So uh, we are really looking forward to continuing being open. We're hoping that with the rollout of vaccines for both staff uh, who are almost entirely fully vaccinated at this point, um, as well as when uh, it's available for families, that we may start seeing some loosening of restrictions and uh, return to normalcy. Um, our hours are going to expand again next year. We're going to be able to offer aftercare from 4 to 5.30. So we'll be able to offer care from 8 to 4, uh, 5.30 next year for families who need that extended day. Uh, we are looking forward to a time when um, the health department says that we can utilize other areas of the JCC, the gym, uh, the swimming pools, restart swimming lessons for our older students. Um, so a lot of good stuff coming down the pike and, of course, just being here and providing um, a wonderful, warm, nurturing preschool experience for our families that want to join us. Excellent. Thank you. Um, well, this has been a wonderful conversation. I really appreciate it. We've been uh, talking with Rabbi Sarah Maiden, the director of the Bender ECC, um, our preschool, and Mara Lasko, lead teacher and mentor um, in, in our preschool, and of course, Diana Avram, who's uh, uh, a parent of, of two children in our school and also uh, the chair of the ECPC, our parent committee. Um, this has been a great conversation. I, I know I um, really appreciated your time and uh, learned a lot about, uh, even more about our preschool. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much thank for you. having us. Thank you very much. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Playing RJ Chats, um, where we meet every Wednesday at, at 1030. Um, we hope to see you next time.